What's going on guys, National Master James Canty III here with Chess.com and today we have the top five queen sacrifices from the Magician of Riga, Mikhail Tao. In this first example, we actually have him playing Grandmaster Alexei Sutin. So Grandmaster Alexei Sutin is playing uh, black here and white is uh, of course Tao. So Bishop D7 was the last move played here in a Sicilian con. It's very, very aggressive as you see for white here. We have F5, I mean, Bishop's looking like they wanna do some kind of work here. Uh, the center is being open, like the king's in the center. This looks like a disaster for black here. But after F5, F5 is now here breaking up the center, breaking up all of this and just trying to open the king side and rip it apart. E takes F5, G takes F5, and then we have 95 from Alexei Sutton here. So he says, all right, cool guys, we gotta get our pieces in the center, maybe eliminate some of the monstrous pieces and attack that he may have coming here. Then he plays 96. Tao just puts the knight on E6 and stares at him extremely hard. At this point, it's very scary. What do you do? You have to get rid of this knight. You actually can't take it this way because of the pin. But bishop takes e6, this knight has to go. So bishop takes e6, and then he takes back on e6 himself. Look at the file here. I mean, look at this file. We're, we're taking on f7. This is open. I mean, look, uh, how many arrows can I draw here, guys? Okay, there's a lot going on. A lot going on. So Alexi opts in for g6 and just says, hey, you have to go. You have to go. Now, it's white to move here, guys. What would you actually do here if you were towel in this position? Here it is, guys. Here it is. Alexei Sutton said, you know what? You got to move your queen. And then Tao looked at him, grabbed his, grabbed his queen, and then just took the knight and hit the clock. Sat back real smooth, and the game was over. Now, he actually really didn't do that, but he felt that. Queen takes e5, and then d takes e5, guys. First off, look at this beautiful queen sacrifice. The queen is uh, just sacrificed for a knight, not two rooks, not anything else, for a knight and actually some uh, some play here, maybe even some mating attacks. I'm also hitting a rook here. So you literally have to take this queen. You don't even have a choice. Why do you even think about it? You just have to take because he, he took your knight here. Now, after d takes e5, we have e takes f7 as the rook and the pawn work very well together. And now the bishops are going to do their job because now they're ready. On an open board, the bishops are ready to do their thing. If king 2 f8 made on the move, have a nice day. And if he goes this way, he jumps right into a discovery that actually ends this way. Due to engine analysis, this is the best line to take. Rook takes, rook f8, and then king d7. Bishop f5 with a double check and everything's hanging. You, you might as well just push the queen and the knight off the board you don't even need them any longer bishop to f5 king to c6 bishop e4 and the only move here is knight to d5 this hurts this hurts this is a family channel let's just get this off the screen already guys this is over we have so much material here and of course everything else is going to fall on mate soon to follow here now of course the game ended right here guys after e takes f7 because he was like you know what i've had enough I had enough. I know what you're going to do. People are watching. I don't want any more of this. And the game ended right here. And this is example one of the top five queen sacrifices of uh, Mikhail Tao. Now let's move on to example two. Now in this next example, we have Milko Bobasov versus Mikhail Tao in 1958. Tao's playing with the black pieces in the King's Indian. We have queen a5 as the last move here, just trying to open up this side of the board as much as possible. And of course, have our pieces aim this way. Play for counterplay. His king is castled this side. Whoever gets to the king first on opposite side castles is going to win. He knows this. So after king b1, of course, always play king b1 kind of thing. b5 is now here. So now rook b8 may be a thing. Capturing, opening the file, trying to open the diagonal here and go for mate. Now this next move by Milko is very interesting and very strong. And you see this as a common theme. Knight to d5, guys. He plays knight to d5 here against Tau. And Tau has a choice here. Well, of course, do we retreat retreat to, to d8 and defend the pawn? Or do we move the queen? Or do we take here on d2? Or do we play b4? What do we actually do here, guys? Now, when you're playing Tau, think about this. When you are playing as Tau here, I want you guys to find a move. Pause the video if you need to. But it, when you're playing like this, you have to remember that this is Tau. So you have to even consider moves like queen takes a2. That makes no sense at all. But of course, it is Tau, the magician for Riga, half man, half everything else. So we do have to see and calculate these kind of moves. What would you actually play with black here? Here's the move. Tau actually picked up his piece. He actually stared at him. He stared at Bobasov and played knight takes d5. Hit the clock, folded his arms, and just sat there with a very weird stare. 
Knight takes d5 is on the board, guys. He is sacrificing his queen like it's nothing. Let's see exactly what we get for it. We actually get three pieces here, or three, po three points. We took a knight. He takes my queen. He gets nine. Now, okay, we get another three points. We'll say like 3.2, three and a half. A bishop is slightly better. Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll give him three and a half points there. And then now we actually not taking anything else because he can move the rook, which he does. And after he moves the rook here, we only get a pawn. So that equals to what? Maybe at at, at the highest seven and a half points, maybe 7.2, seven points here. Not a lot of points here. We actually missed off by two points because he took a queen. So that's like not equally out, but it actually does in this kind of position here because of the counterplay that you get in, in addition to the pawns. If we look at white's pieces here, they're all locked in still. They're not doing anything. And um, ours are pretty active. Not that these aren't extremely active, this rook and this knight, but they were about to be. And let's see what happens. Rook takes c4. He gets rid of it. Pawn takes and then knight to uh, c1 here. And let's fast forward some moves here to see the play so we can move to the next example. Rook to b8, bishop takes c4, and knight to b6, hitting the bishop. Being very active here. Watch how, how Tao puts all of his pieces on the side of the board where all the action is, guys. On the side of the board where all of the action is. He plays c4. Make sure we open the file. I mean, he's on the defense here every single move. Look at this beautiful move here. c3 is coming. Knight to c4 is a follow-up. Man, so strong. So he plays queen to d3. Now we take on b2. Now we have holes around your king here. And then knight to d4, bishop d7, and watch us swing the pieces in. Look at every piece that we own is in this attack. This is how you attack like a magician. Bishop to b3, knight a4, we're going to do knight to c3 check. So he gets rid of it, bishop takes, knight to b3. Hey, just keep the threats rolling. Rook to c3, queen takes, bishop takes b3, takes, and here we go. Nice move here. We're actually threatening this, but we're also threatening uh, other things as well, like discoveries. So if king takes, we actually have a check here. There may be better checks, but this is just the easiest check right out of the bat here. We literally just win the queen back, and we're up decisive material here. But uh, with that being said, the last move was queen to a3. Not even sure what he's doing here. I think he's just trying to stop this. But at the end of the day, he's still losing after rook check. Then he t instead of taking with the pawn, guys, he actually takes with the rook and then king to a2. And that's made on the move, guys. Made on the move. Wow, what a beautiful checkmate. You don't see that very often, right? And this was example number two of the top five queen sacrifices from the magician of Riga, Mikhail Tao. Now let's move on to example number three. Now this next example is Hans Joachim Heck versus Mikhail Tao. Back in 1962. This is a very famous queen sacrifice, guys. Now, if you have seen this before, then this is a joy for you. This is a finder. If you haven't seen this before, then I highly recommend you pause the video and see what you can do here. It's actually white to move right now, guys, as we reach a Queen's Indian uh, position, a, a Kasparov variation. Queen's Indian is what happened in this opening. And now, we get to a very, very sharp position at a crossroads where my queen on A4 is attacked. My knight is attacked on c4. There are some problems here, so we need to uh, address it. But also, this is hanging on f6. So what do you actually do here, guys? White to move. Here's what Tao did. Tao was feeling very great that day. And he looked up, he looked down, he looked around the room. And then he thought about life. And then he said, you know what? He didn't even think about it. He just take, took the knight. He takes f6. He's going to take it. We got enough play. I see everything. E takes F6. Here it is, guys. A spectacular queen sacrifice. Watch what's about to happen next. B takes A4, okay? So now we have a queen here. This is what he does. I mean, he, he sacrifices queens in his sleep. B takes A4 and F takes G7. Now we're hitting the rook here. We're threatening to actually take on G6 too as well. Maybe, I mean, rookie one's coming. Like, we got some serious compensation here. And also, look at the king. The king is not really looking too good on spaces he has king d7 these pieces are virtually out of the game whoa like and then you stop and look and understand the compensation this could be very bad for black rook to g8's on the board here then a spectacular follow-up move here guys many players would play what move here i'm sure you're thinking and if you aren't thinking you should probably think here and stop pause the video what would you actually play as white but here rookie one right rookie one seems like a natural move especially if you're just playing quickly rookie one you just play rookie one Tao was like a uh, bishop f5 and be live. Bishop f5, what a move. Beautiful, guys. This seals the deal on the spot. I don't have to win the queen with the rook. I can win a queen with my bishop. So if he takes this, this bishop here, 
Queen takes f5, we have knight to d6 check, and we come back and we're doing great, actually. We have so much so much that we can do here, so much potential. Maybe even rookie 7 sometimes in certain lines, but uh, bishop to f5, beautiful move here. Now after bishop f5, we have knight takes h4. He says, oh, I'm just going to get rid of it. It's time to get rid of this piece. So after bishop takes e6, then uh, bishop to a6, and knight to d6 from tau. King e7, bishop to c4, and now we're not losing any material as we're able to take care of everything. Everything's defended. You take my knight, I take your bishop. You take my bishop, I take back. These pawns look crazy here. It's just not looking the best, actually. I mean, and white's, white's going to definitely do some damage here just because of the fact the king's in the center. This knight's kind of out, out of play. It's not really good. Rook takes g7, and there's g3 here. G3 from the knight. Now, of course, there's many, many moves here, guys. Um, and, and Tao went on to win this game, guys. But it's the example part here. They got very wild that I wanted to show you guys. And I was so excited to show you guys this one if you've never seen it before. Instead of just retreating, guys, this will get your mind in, in the realm of the magician himself. You don't always have to move a piece if it's threatened. Now, of course, you will lose many games if you don't do that. But at the same time, you can win many games if you think outside the box or inside the box or inside Tao's box or head or whatever. B, B takes a4 and then f takes, G, f takes g7 and rig to g8 and bishop f5. Beautiful display here, guys. After b5, there's pawn takes f6. He didn't even think about it. Of course, he thought about it. But here, this was a very, a very, very nice way to do this is taking here, taking the knight first, making complications. And Tao is the king of making complications for his opponent this is why he's my favorite player i love to create complications and tactics guys and this was awesome to actually see it b takes a4 f takes g7 rook g8 bishop f5 guys knight takes h4 and we got into this position where he went on to win the game and this guys was example number three now let's move on to example number four next example we have isaac Burbreger versus Mikhail Tao. With the black pieces, there was a Benoni defense from for the opening here. We got to a very wild position. What else would we get with playing Tao? So we have a wild position here as we see this pawn, this knight's hanging right here. The queen looks like he's locked out. This bishop's over here. This, this is just wild. This is what you expect to see when you're walking and you look at Tao's board and you're like, oh yeah, typical Tao position. Rook to g2. What happens for black here? He actually takes on f3. Queen takes f3, doesn't care about anything. Here, maybe you can do stuff like bishop to h3, and there's all kind of things that can happen here. He just takes on f3 and says, forget it. And then, you know what? Instead of even taking a knight, he didn't want any trouble there. He just says, oh, knight d2, Tao. I'm not going to, I'm not playing that game with you. I'm just not. So he plays queen to e3 here. Now still threatening stuff like f3. This check could be deadly as well. There's many things that can happen. And after queen to e3, there's knight to f1. Now he goes back and says, oh, I'll take a draw. Queen f3, knight d2. I'll take a draw. Yeah, I'm not going through all those complications with you, Tao. Yeah, I'll take a draw here. Now, with black to move, guys, as he's thinking and contemplating, should he take this draw, what actually would you do in this position? Instead of taking the draw here, instead of taking the draw, Tao was like, you know, what day is it? What time is it? It could be like, you know what? Yep, it's that time. And then he sacrificed his queen. Bishop takes g4. Didn't even think about it. It's there on the board. Bishop takes g4. And then knight takes f3. Bishop takes. And now this is crazy. This actually doesn't even look like there's enough compensation. But in fact, there is. After bishop takes f f4, there's h4 on the board. Now, of course, the, the things that were happening is this could be a thing. Like you almost don't have a de many defenses to these kind of things. Also, if bishop moves, bishop takes e4. So maybe doing this, doubling. Uh, playing rook e5, doubling the rooks here, and playing like rook to g5, especially if bishop e2 moves. I mean, look at the tie down. I mean, it, he's it's so miraculous at tying down pieces to be able to do only one thing and one thing only. So after bishop takes f3, there's h4 on the board, and then rook to f8. And then we'll make, we'll make a few more moves here to show you guys what happened. Bishop to e2, knight g3, king h2, and then he takes on g2. And honestly, guys, he went on to win this game. Let's check the, ne the next few moves. Look at that. Queen's back. Hey, thanks for the queen. Appreciate it, bro. Takes, takes, check, check, and bishop f4. And actually, he went on to win this game, guys. But back to the spectacular moment here. Instead of taking that draw, you can always look for that advance. Now, of course, I've been, I'm not sure if I'm talking to anyone here watching the video, but 
you know, sometimes you push on and you lose a drawn game. But here, this is Tao. This is Tao. It's his kind of his kind of sacrifice. He sacrificed the queen. Saw that he had compensation for it. How much compensation? It's also the shock factor over the board that he took into account too of not being of surprising his opponent here, and it actually worked out in his favor here. So this was example number four of the top five queen sacrifices by Tao. Now, guys, let's look at the final example. Now, in this last example, guys, we have Roman Turan Albero versus Mike Altao, guys. This last game was actually a reverse Sicilian here, and which was in English, so it actually started with 1c4. Now, in this position, guys, of course, it gets scary. It gets kind of weird. It looks like White's doing fine here, but also Black has the bishops here, but it could be deadly because of the center. You just don't know. It's just a wild position, as we always see with Tao here. Now, after queen to d2, rook to e8 is actually placed here, putting some pressure on this knight, but also the bishop. So, you know, Roman realizes what's going on and plays knight g5, because we're going to check right here, and we let you let you do whatever you want. Like, we're going to check you right here. It's going to be bad when we follow up with knight f7. Unless maybe it might not be. He actually said, Rook takes E3. Whoa, come and get me. Rook takes E3, come and get me. And then he plays Bishop to D5 check. Now, guys, what do you actually do here? What do you actually do? Pause the video. Can you find the next two moves here after King H8 and Knight F7? What do you do? What do you do, guys? King H8, Knight F7. So are we going back to G8? What would you do? Are we trying it again? But here's what happens. Tal actually says, I'm not doing any of that. Queen takes f7. I'll take that one too, my good friend. I'll take that one too from you. He didn't care about it. Yeah, I moved my king to the corner, knight f7. At this point, we now have a bishop and we have a knight for the queen that we're sacrificing. After the queen's gone, bishop, oh, rook to d3 first. And now, bishop to d4 check. There it is. Hit the man with the move here. Very nice. Look at the play here. It's going to be very scary. This was the key move. It seals the deal. This rook to d3 followed by bishop to d4 check. King is here. We don't want to go to the corner because there's mating threats that could happen. So we need to have an escape square. So after king g2, 95. Now we're getting everything into the play here. Bishop to g4 is looking nice. Rook here followed by some checks. Wow. Look at how all the pieces work together in great harmony. Very harmonious way to play after sacrificing a queen here. Now after rook to d1. Rook to e3, queen f1, there's a check, and then there's rook to f3, and this game's already over, guys. This game's already over here. This bishop's hanging, so he's going to try a few moves here. Queen e2, just to defend, and then after bishop f5, he just resigns. Bishop f5, the game's completely over here. I mean, after king to h4, uh, I think the best move here is actually bishop e3, followed by g5. Is that what the engine says, I think? I think that was the uh, the lines here. Um, from from looking at that you also have king g7 followed by h6 and g5 There's some a few moves you could play here But I think bishop e3 is actually the best and it is it is because this bishop's hanging so bishop e3 and bishop to g5 Or h6 g5 kind of stuff and putting a bishop on g5 will be mate bishop e3 h6 or bishop g5 Looks very nice here. You have many ways to win it. and of course Tao went on to win this game guys It was an excellent way of uh, of sacrificing a queen and following up with powerful moves. Let's look at that again Back here, guys. Back here. Reverse Sicilian. Everything's going fine. White's feeling like he's good. He's doing great. Oh, knight g5. I got him, guys. You know, I got him. And then Bishop Rook takes c3. He's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And then check. And then he takes it. And, you know, probably his eyes got huge here. He took it. Then you have to realize I'm playing Tao. So then he just relaxes and just like, well, I'm just going to have to go through the motions at this point. Bishop takes Rook d3. Check. And then 95, oh my goodness, and the game is completely over after a few more moves, guys. This was the top five queen sacrifices from Mikhail Tao, the magician from Riga, and my favorite player, guys. And I'm National Master James Canty III with chess.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe here at the channel, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.